Hi, I'm Scott from Finishing Touch Carpentry. Today I'm going to show you how to connect fittings to a handrail. This is the uh, Festool Domino machine that I bought about five years ago. I chose the larger XL700 model because I do uh, railing joints where I'm inserting dominoes into the joints and also tabletop work um, like this glue up here. The machine is one of those uh, purchases that uh, once you make it you wish you would have done it uh, a long time ago. The same is with uh, the domino connectors for the XL700. I purchased the kit for this uh, railing job here with the uh, non-typical rail that's only 40 millimeters thick and it's too uh, narrow for me to use uh, traditional uh, zip bolts that I normally use. The customer also wanted a piece of the railing removable for moving large items up the staircase. The kit comes with enough hardware to do 48 uh, joints. There's uh, 32 of the corner connectors and 16 of the flat connectors. Flat connectors are used for uh, tabletop joints like a butcher block top and the corner joints are used for for example the skirt board and leg on a table and in also in this case both of these systems can be used for a railing. I already had a good idea of how to use these connectors because I saw them on Festool Live which airs on Fridays and you can watch it on YouTube. The instructor Sedge does a really good job of explaining this system and he recommended taking the instructions and blowing them up on a photocopier so this is exactly what I did. This job involved uh, making up a three foot section of handrail with a terminal fitting at each end. I could either use a corner connector or a flat connector, but in this case I decided to use the corner connector because that way there would only be one hole in the bottom of the railing. Disadvantage is that the anchor bolt uh, can't be readily removed uh, if you make a mistake. And for that reason I put the anchor in the railing portion, not in the fitting, but you could do it either way. Uh, one of the things I've learned from experience is that uh, the joints or the cuts on the fitting from the factory aren't always 90 degrees. Not only that, but the irregular shape of fittings uh, makes them difficult to cut precisely. So what I do is hot glue them to a chunk of scrap plywood. This way I can hold the plywood tight to the fence and make a flawless cut. I use a random piece of stock to line the fitting parallel to the edge of the plywood. I use this technique for curved fittings as well. It's really a game changer. Well, at this point, you might be uh, thinking to yourself, well, this guy is actually smarter than he looks, but uh, this is not my technique. I learned it from watching Jimmy DeResta on YouTube. Jimmy uses this technique a lot for securing uh, items while he's working on them, whether he's cutting them or sanding them, and then simply uh, remove the hot glue after uh, with the use of a heat gun. But uh, strangely enough, up until this point, I never owned a heat gun. Uh, I seem to own just about every tool known to mankind, but uh, I've never used a heat gun. So this is the first time using this uh, piece of kit. You can remove just about all the glue with the heat gun and a scraper, and after that, just uh, put the sander to it, and you won't uh, you won't see any remains of the hot glue whatsoever. The next step in the process is the uh, layout and it's arguably the most important step in the whole uh, project. It's important to mark the uh, depth of the cutter and also the fence height clearly on the material, both on the fitting and the railing. So, uh, they can be easily sanded off later and uh, they're, they're pretty important. The instructions for the connector layout are in metric, uh, Festool being a uh, German company. And I've found that over the years, even though I grew up uh, learning the imperial system and my apprenticeship, I've come to learn that adding and subtracting imperial fractions is much more difficult than simply uh, adding and subtracting metric. It's funny, every time I have this uh, metric imperial conversation with another carpenter, the uh, scene from Terminator comes to mind where Arnold Schwarzenegger walks up to the counter in the, in the gun store and says, Give me the Uzi 9mm. Now that the layout is done, you're going to want to fasten your fittings 
to a scrap piece of melamine or something like I'm doing here, along with some pieces of stock with hot glue so that you can actually uh, do your holes with a domino machine on a, a six inch long piece of uh, fitting. You'll see here that I'm attaching the fitting upside down, of course, and there's a piece of stock on each side hot glued to the melamine. I'm hot gluing one fitting to each end of a three foot long strip melamine so I can just flip it over and do all my cuts in succession. I'm setting my fence height for 30 millimeters because the uh, railing is uh, approximately 60 millimeters in depth. The depth of the 14 millimeter cutter is set at 50 millimeters for the first cut. Repeat this cut on the other fitting uh, so that I don't have to change my depth back and forth. Now I'm going to set up uh, an adapter that allows the uh, domino machine to be used in a vertical fashion. You're going to use this for a 40 millimeter uh, depth cut uh, that uh, is also 40 millimeters from the edge of the fitting. The depth of this cut has to be 10 millimeters more than the center of the horizontal cut, which in this case was 30 millimeters. I realize that this may be a little bit difficult to follow, but uh, when you do your own pieces, uh, you'll, you'll figure it out. I, I strongly recommend doing a practice run on a, on a piece of two by four or something. It's important to have your domino machine hooked up to a vacuum system. I'm using a Festool CT36, which is underneath my workbench. I would say that the Festool vacuum systems uh, are probably the best on the market, at least in my experience, and they capture most of the dust and debris from work and especially effective uh, in things like domino routing and also in sanding. If you're not familiar with uh, a domino cutter, uh, this footage shows the bit oscillating back and forth and that's how it makes the uh, oblong holes in your project. It's quite an ingenious system and uh, really makes for good joinery. Now that my fittings are both done, I'm going to lay out the railing on both ends for uh, the appropriate cuts. 30 millimeters is the fence uh, height and 25 millimeters for the bit depth. This is the appropriate depth for the anchor bolt that you're going to hammer into the end of uh, the railing. The secret for using the domino machine, of course, is to hold yourself uh, steady, but also uh, let the machine do its work without rushing it. Uh, it'll make nice, uh, clean cuts that way. Now that all the domino work uh, is done, it's a matter of prying the uh, fittings off the, the plywood here. And it looks like uh, I am a rookie at using a heat gun because I've used a little bit too much uh, heat to try and remove this fitting. So maybe don't do that when you do yours. Well, as you can see, I burnt the wood. A little bit too much heat, but a uh, little bit of uh, work with a sander, and it's as good as new. But just so you know, I do make mistakes, and I try and fix them as best as I can, and otherwise I have a perfectly uh, good complaint system set up. <laughs> Next we're going to start installing our connectors. This is the uh, split anchor that gets uh, hammered uh, gently just flush with the end of the fitting. Uh, then you take the uh, cross bolt and uh, assemble it. Uh, you can put the uh, aligning uh, these black plastic sh uh, sleeves on before or after and you simply thread them into the anchor bolt. And as it does this it actually spreads the anchor bolt and holds it securely in, in the work. Once you get that uh, bolt uh, finger tight, you're going to have to crank it in place uh, with the uh, Allen wrench that's supplied. You'll see here that there's a sweet spot where the uh, anchor bolt has to be um, stopped with the uh, concave uh, portion of the bolt pointing upwards so the set screw will actually tighten up the uh, joint. Again, uh, you'll 
you'll experience this once you do one of the joints and it works very well. This time I put the plastic sleeves on after, it really doesn't matter which way you do it. Now for the uh, fittings, you're going to insert a set screw into what's called the cross bolt and you're going to push that into the, the fitting on the uh, hole that you did 40 millimeters uh, deep. Uh, this is going to uh, facilitate the connector uh, making a very tight uh, connection. Once the uh, cross bolts are in place, uh, and then you can start uh, doing a dry fit and making sure the connections are going to work nice before the glue up. I'm really impressed with how this works. Um, I've done a lot of fittings with different uh, connectors and uh, this process really um, seems to work really good. You have to remember that um, fittings from a factory are always a little bit different, usually bigger than the railing. Uh, so you will have to definitely do some sanding. Uh, this dry fit went really well and um, uh, I did notice that the fitting was uh, a little uh, different uh, in alignment with the railing and it's going to require some sanding after the glue up. As a side note, there are these little shells inside the kit that go on top of the cross bolt and that's for use when you use the domino on the wider uh, groove selection. Well at this point I'm really happy with how the dry fit went so I'm going to take the uh, fittings apart. You'll notice how easy this is to do with this system, just loosen the allen screw. And I'm going to put some glue on both uh, sides of the joint, both on the fitting and the railing. I rub the glue into the end grain and then add another bead of glue to each side before I put the uh, joint together. This ensures you're going to get a solid joint that once you tighten that fitting down, you, you actually a little bit of the glue is going to sit proud of the uh, joint and so that when you do this final sanding, the sawdust in the glue is going to mix and make an almost flawless joint. I tighten the set screw so the joint is just snug and then I make sure the alignment marks are, are lined up before I uh, tighten the uh, fitting uh, as much as I possibly can with the Allen wrench and, uh, and then let the glue set. Then I'm going to wipe off the excess glue with a, a damp cloth and then do the sand up and it will really turn out nice as you'll see. I use a Festool RO90 Rotex uh, sander for my railing work. It's got a uh, more aggressive setting that uh, really can take off a lot of material in a short uh, period of time. In order to use the uh, Rotex uh, setting on the sander, you have to turn the sander off and then uh, move the selector switch. It actually makes the uh, sander work in a direct drive fashion like a grinder would. I've secured the uh, railing to my bench with these Festool quick clamps. I'm using an MFT table that has 20 millimeter holes and uh, the clamps uh, work really well. They're actually a very good value. Once the uh, sanding is all done, the last step is to put a cover onto the uh, access holes in the bottom of the railing. There's three different colors to choose from and they're really not noticeable as they're on the bottom of the railing. Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching. I have several other videos in this series on uh, balustrade construction and I encourage you to check them out.